What? Everybody, the Catfish Weekly presented by Whiskerware Apparel, <laughs> along with the Doctor Tim Lang and Cindy. I'm Lyle Stokes. We got a good one tonight, Doc, and we got a lot of people in the chat. We got a lot of people want to spin on the old rig wrap prize wheel. Yeah, they're they're in there pretty good already. Yeah, it's uh, it's really been a a busy week. I see Dieter's already made it in. Dustin Fall, Yakin with Sarah, Steve Turn. Rod Wise, a whole bunch of them's already in the chat. But before we get started, um, last week um, we lost uh, a good friend of mine online. His name was Jason Charlton. Um, Jason lost his life on the Lake of the Ozarks below Truman Dam. Uh, he survived by his wife, Jenny, and they have two young boys. There is a bunch of uh, places that you can give offer assistance throughout the um, online community as well as the local areas. Uh, Jason was a great fisherman. He was a great boater, although he was not wearing his life jacket and something that we all need to be paying attention to at this point. Uh, I would like to have a moment of silence for Jason and his family before we start, if you guys don't mind. All right, guys. Appreciate that, Doc. We have we got a, a major major issue going on with this rig wrap prize wheel tonight. It, it's going to be a lot of fun. Yep. Let me get my stuff on here. All right. Triple Seven Outdoors. Dennis Mayo, Richard Morrison, East Star Seventy Five, Richard Warsno, Warsco. I hope I'm not tearing that up too bad. James Dockery, Charles Venable. A lot of people in there tonight, Doc. We're just rocking and rolling. It's going to be a great show. we got a bunch of stuff to announce at the end of the show, but we want to get started right away. We have Tim Hardwick and his daughter in the show with us tonight. Hey, Tim, how's it going? What's going on, guys? Say hi. Hi. It's not every day that we get a little lady like that in the show with us. But now I got to tell you, Doc, um, after your granddaughter star started signing up for the rig wrap prize wheel, I'm looking for her entry every week. Yeah. And she's she, in there. She was late getting it to me today. And I was looking all through to see if I missed it. And about that time it popped up. So uh, if, if the kids don't think that they mean a lot to us, they're badly mistaken. Yep. <sighs> And it will soon be time to have them all out. First. That's the goal anyhow. Dennis Mayo says, dang, heard my name, thought I was a winner. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. <clears throat> Hang tight, though. Hmm. We, have, we had a, a big day today. I'm pretty sure at the end of this next week when we give away the rod rack that I'm probably going to have to go get a new mouse. Uh, I think I'll have <laughs> yeah. one, one out by then. Uh, yeah. the way it's going because I you you had checked earlier and we had uh, 294 people that were had signed up for the rod rack. Now yeah. we're going to be giving that away next week on the 19th, so next Monday night. So if you're not signed up, you want to make sure to get signed up for that. And I, I'm going to throw this out there that if you're signed up for the rod rack, you will also be signed up for the rig wrap prize wheel. We're going to combine them. I'm not doing two of them again. Uh, it's going to be a, a big deal. So if you want to sign up for one, you're going to be entered in both. Uh, it's just nuts trying to keep up with two of them. It's just not enough for me to go around. So, yeah, it's, they kept you pretty busy. I'm glad I'm working that way. I don't have to deal with it. <laughs> it's crazy, man. I'm going to need a 2.0 Cindy. Yeah, that ain't no joke. Uh, that's a fact. It's uh, It's been really busy this week, but we're glad to have it. Tim. What's going on? I've seen you guys down at the uh, at the Catfish Conference. It looked like you had a bang-up time down there. Dude, it was intense. I couldn't get away from the booth whatsoever the whole day Saturday. <laughs> that's good, though. That That is a great event, and uh, I think everybody's already looking forward to next year. Oh, I'm stoked for next year. I'm telling I'm telling her he's gonna need to run out of stadium. Yeah, that may be. Did you sell everything yeah. you took down? We there? completely sold out uh Sunday. Wow. <clears throat> wow. So that so you did better this year than you did last year. 
Yeah, last year we took about 800 lights and we only sold about 150. And this year I probably sold 150 in the first two hours there. And it, it slowed down a little bit, but we only had 550 there that weekend and we sold out of them. So it's a good, good deal. To have. Awesome. Good deal. That is, that's a great deal and a great event. Can't thank them guys enough for everything that they do. While we're on that, I want to give another shout out to that little guy, Christian. He, he hauled butt doing all them ticket sales. It wouldn't have been as smooth as it was without him. That's what I understand. I was so busy. I didn't get a chance to go see him or visit with him or anything, but I understand he done a really good job. And uh, there's another prime example, Doc, of keeping the kids involved. Kids involved, yeah. They, they do a bang-up job if they're given the chance. And, uh, you know, I'm I'm just proud of them kids to do this stuff. It's really cool. I'm hoping next year that we can get more kids' stuff involved for the conference. Maybe have them. I'm going to try to have her help me run one of the booths that we get and hopefully have multiple booths and maybe have like some kid games or some kids products and stuff to get more kids attracted down there. I think that'd be great. Um, yeah, it would be. I, don't you think, Doc, if they had stuff for the kids to do, the fa they would make it even more of a family event than it already is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There was enough kids down there this year. There was more kids down there this year than there was last year. Yeah, now there's some big kids down there too. Yeah, we had. Yeah. I'm one of them. Yeah, we had Jerry <laughs> and uh, Jason and uh, Joe Lucky and and Mark Farrell and all them guys was over there behind us. You know that don't get to be much bigger kids than those guys. Yeah, but it was a lot of fun and and quite the deal. <laughs> Kids make it funner. I agree, Shayla. <laughs> yep. We we lit up one kid's day pretty good there with that bike. There was a it was another couple that won, and he paid one dollar for one raffle ticket. And uh, he came over hourly to see if that thing was being drawn yet, see if he won. And when we did the drawing, he didn't win, but the couple did. She was a teacher. They didn't have any kids, so they gave him the bike, and he was. That lit up his day. They we all took pictures and <laughs> That's his weekend. Good. That's pretty neat. Well, Tim, tell us about your lights and how you got started. <clears throat> well, like I tell everybody, I'm just a little guy that makes lights. I'm nobody special. Uh, I used to buy these things all the time, different versions that other guys made, and I just got got it up my butt one day to say, "Hey, I'm going to try and make these myself," and uh, it's Pretty much history as she wrote after that I, I went up through three different designs now uh we're maybe modifying this one here soon on the next batch so it might be a whisker stick 3.5 but uh, uh oh i forgot to mute my phone but um yeah we've just been making them knocking them out uh i started out just taking pictures of them posting them on facebook people took a an interest to it and uh, like I've been saying in my last live streams, if you have an idea or you have something that you're trying to put out there for people to see and catch on to, it only takes one person. And one person's name for me was Cesar Medina. He bought 50 lights down in Texas. Showed him the We're losing your connection. Where did he go? I don't know if he's having internet issues or just what. Uh, oh. No. Oh. He's just locked up. Yeah. Just like his internet connection went away. Well, we'll wait on for him to come back. We can answer some of the questions. We we know a lot about these lights. Yes. I mean, we we've been uh, sponsoring him here since he actually started. So. Uh, uh, Jerry Ishomer, how long does the battery last on him? I know Tim at one time said over 600 hours. Um, I had one here at the house that lasted almost 500. My granddaughter, Star, did a study on his lights, and her average was somewhere around uh, four and 500 hours. So, Yeah, that's. Uh, I remember when you done that, that was quite a deal. It was a, a game to see how long it actually would go. 
Is anybody else hearing Tim? Nobody else is hearing Tim, correct? I'm not. I mean, we've him. lost him on ours. Right, he's he just, his, he's, he's, yeah, he's froze up. Yeah, he'll probably have to restart. Yeah, okay. Hey, uh, the guys that are in chat, uh, last week there was a gentleman named Maurice Kaysen. He won a, a hat. If he's in there tonight, uh, please get with Doc here on our Facebook, on our Catfish Weekly Facebook page. I've got a hat to send you, and I need an address. So, again, that was Maurice Kaysen. Yeah, uh, it'd be great if we could get that to him. Are you back? I thought I kicked out for a second. I apologize. Yeah. For that. Okay. No problem. What did you hear last? Uh, what did uh, conversations ago? Then you guys asking, no, I don't know where I got cut off at. Uh, you just started talking about your lights that you had made them. Uh, you had uh, sold like 50 to a gentleman, and that's where you locked up. Okay. What I've always told people is it just takes one person to uh, help blow your idea up and get it out there. And that one person for me, his name was Cesar Medina. Uh, he bought 50 lights that he's seen on my Facebook. And uh, after he got those... They really liked him. He and Chris Flores. Uh, I know his friends that picked him up from the airport that year for his birthday trip to Dallas. To see him, he liked him. He got in contact with me. And uh, he's like, you should try selling these at the conference. He invited me down. And uh, we sold them there. And then it went viral after that. And I've been making thousands and thousands of them since. And they've getting better and better every year. Good deal. That's great. Uh, we got a few questions in the chat. I just saw one of them. I missed it. Uh, where was it? Boy, this thing runs over. Oh, do the lights stay on constantly or do they have an on off button? Scott Loveless asked that. They're pretty much a simple unit inside this boot, and the battery just sends like this. So if you want to turn it off, you pull the battery out, turn it on, you put the battery in. You can turn the battery upside down and slide it in to keep it safe without using the power. But aside from that, they just stay lit. And these will run about 400 hours plus. It just depends on people's vision. <clears throat> Pretty cool. Pretty cool. I'm to watch for questions myself, too. I know there's a lot of people that... Uh have used them for a number of different things. You had quite a deal went on at Christmas time with people with different uh, ways of using the lights. Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, Chris put on the, uh, he, he approached me and asked about doing that contest. 1,001 uses for whisker sticks contest. And, uh, people could put up any idea, whatever they could imagine or if it was going on a Christmas tree like Doc did or if you were putting them in a swimming pool, whatever you could think fishing related or not. And uh, whoever got the most uh, votes would, would win the prize. The winner with the most votes was uh, Christopher as the blind fisherman different Chris Flores. And uh, his idea was just putting with your bicycle for at night and lot of bikes. Tim, you've got Since a that was the winning idea. Bad internet connection. Hey. We can barely understand what you're saying. Yeah, it's tripping out real bad. Yeah, well, I think we lost him again, Lyle. Yeah, his internet's not very strong where he's at. But, uh, One second. Okay. Hey, Alyssa, pick us out a number Six. five. Well, she might not. All right, we back. Am I good? You're lots better now. Okay, yeah. It was. I didn't realize my phone hotspot was still on. They they reset the router back here at the house. So. Uh huh. But, but yeah, there's a lot of uses people came up with. I think we had like 
30 or 40 plus entries with different pictures. Some people took videos and actually sent video submissions. Uh, some really cool stuff. Dog collars for guys who take their dogs hunting. Things like that. Yeah. I attach mine to the my uh, offshore planter boards. I put them out there. Tape them right to it. Liz has got an idea here she wants to show people. Uh, I, I wrote a note about um, my shoe and um, I, the pink um, lights are in my. We lost him all together that time. Yep. <laughs> well, we'll see if he comes there. Here he's coming. Um, I had um, pink light, but we don't um, have pink lights, but this is the only one. And I have um, shoe like pockets, um, like in front of my shoe on top. And I um, had a great idea, um, like about putting it in, in my shoe. That works out really so, good, don't Night fishing. Yeah. So when I go night fishing, that way you don't get lost. Yeah. That way I can see her wherever she runs off to. <laughs> exactly right. That's exactly right. So you got another fishing partner there with you now. Yeah, this is my boy Andrew. He just dropped in to say hi. Awesome. Check out what he's wearing. Alyssa, pick us out a number between one and five. Uh, pick a number. I choose nine. Nine? Between one and five. Between one and five. I think <laughs> six. How about three? I think yeah. we'll places. go three. All right. Two. Doc, 695 people entered tonight in our drawing. Yeah. And wow. three, the winner is Sandy Wells. Sandy Wells is out of Texas. Ready? Yes, I am. Let's see what Sandy wins tonight. I can see that really spinning. What do you do? Grease that thing? No. <laughs> I moved it closer. Mudbum mud Supply Shack. Sandy, if you will contact the boys up at the Mudbum Supply Shack in Iowa, they have a $25 gift certificate for you, I believe is the prize, and you can spend it right there in their store. They have everything fishing that you could possibly okay. imagine. So give them a buzz, and the boys up there will take good care of you. And congratulations. Good deal. Playing the prize wheel game. That's Carl's wife. Had dinner with them down at Monsters on the Ohio uh, last year when we was down there, wasn't it? Them and James and Lisa. Big time. <laughs> uh, people say, my chances keep getting smaller and smaller. You're what? <laughs> so people are saying on chat, my chances keep getting smaller and smaller. They remember <laughs> there was only 200 people on it. I remember when there was only 65. Yeah, me too. Me too. Well, Tim, what else you got to tell us about the uh, LED light business? Well, we got some things coming out. Um, if anybody's watched the last couple live feed videos, we've announced we're going to have a new price change starting April 1st. Um, it's not going up a lot. The base price is stay still the same, five bucks a light, but it's going to be the... <clears throat> Instead of doing six for twenty-five and ten for forty, uh, we're gonna be doing three for thirteen fifty and uh, ten for forty-five. So the price just went up a little bit on the bulk packages, but you still get to save a good chunk of change buying in bulk. And the shipping's went up a little bit, but that's not gonna start until April first. Cost materials have went up a little bit, so uh, we just tried to hike it up uh, proportionately. Uh, not trying to price gouge nobody. Uh, but other things we got coming out is, uh, oh, um, since the prices aren't changed until April 1st, even though we're out of stock, if you want to put a pre-order in uh, between now and April 1st, it'll lock you in at the old price. You can pick any of the new colors that are coming out. And when we get them in, uh, you guys will get them, get first picks at them. So it's the order that the payments were received and you guys will still get your lights. Uh, we're looking maybe a couple <clears throat> a couple more weeks out until we're back in full production. We're just waiting on some color bulbs and some tubes 
to come in and we'll be ready to rock. Uh, but other things we're coming out with is uh, we're bringing back the orange lights. Uh, we're bringing back the fast and slow color changers. Uh, we're releasing the ultraviolet black light whisker stick. Uh, we're going to see how that does. Uh, so it it's an indefinite uh, release. We might take it back. Sure. Um, and then I have some purples that are coming in. We might be able to come out with a purple if they turn out to look good too. So there's some new things, but pretty much it's going to be staying the same as it has been. They're, they're all going to be packaged the same, same battery, same uh, zip ties here. They're going to be the same lights, just a few different colors and a slight price change. Man, that's great. I know that zip tie you got is really a good deal there. I like because you don't have to throw it away every time you use it. You can reuse it over and over and over. What do you guys think about, uh, since I got y'all on here, if I came out with a couple different sizes of those zip ties, longer ones, extra long, shorter, that'd be something many of you guys are into for different applications besides fishing? or I would say it would be good for guys that are using it for things other than rod and reel, mm -hmm. like anchor ropes and things like that. I'm looking into it because I noticed last week I mentioned uh, the 300 millimeter and Steve Douglas asked something about it, about how much that, how long that was in inches. I don't know if he took some interest in it or not. And that got me thinking about it. Sure. Thanks, Get Slime Catfishing. Appreciate it. Awesome. <clears throat> I like your shirt. When will the UV black light be available? It will be available the same time as every other color. All the colors are going to come out the same time. <clears throat> awesome. You sure? <laughs> Cat Mad uh, says safety lights for hikers. That's a good idea. You know, you could put them yeah. on for guys riding bicycles at nights, which uh, I don't uh, necessarily agree with, but. If they're riding them at night, that would be a good way to light them up and very inexpensive way to, for protection. Yep, I, I would guess that's right. If you didn't know where you put them or you was having trouble seeing them. Uh, Tim, do you know how well they work in the fog? Fog? I haven't got to test in a dense fog yet. That's something we haven't had around here to try out yet. Well, it's been kind uh, of cold for fog, really. I, th I think it would be great to light up fog. I know in, in clear open air... They're definitely visible from a hundred plus yards away, hands down. There, there's no debating it. And some guys have claimed to see them from a quarter of a mile away. So uh, the brightness is definitely there. I don't know how thick the fog would be to have to blind it out, but I think you would just kind of see a broader glow. You know, if it's been a long, long time since I was on one, and I plan on it being <clears throat> before I'm on another one. <laughs> <laughs> Terry Catbuster Atkins is asking about shirts. Um, if you guys are interested in these shirts, they're um, they're on my Teespring virtual store. Just go to uh, it's pinned at the top post. If you can go to um, Teespring.com, just look up Whisker Sticks, and you'll find them there. They're a classic edition. They got a little logo in the front and a big one in the back. And uh, once we get some other technical things out of the way, I might try to bring back the uh, catfish don't have curfews sign too. Awesome. Sounds great. Doc, we just got a Facebook message from the people that won the hat last week. Good. All right, cool. So that's covered. Good deal. All right. Hey, uh, Rob Gregg, Tim is from Cincinnati, Ohio. I was just about to say that. I'm an hour away from Doc. <laughs> That's, that's a long way out there. And a lot of people don't realize that when we do this show, I'm in southwest Missouri, and Doc is out in someplace. Uh, Springfield, uh, Ohio. I knew what the name of it was. <laughs> <laughs> I sent you some stuff in the mail today. <laughs> uh, I said, what the heck was that, a lightsaber? That's the whisker stick swinging through the air. Yeah, no, that was my phone going off. That's what that lightsaber was. Lightsaber. <laughs> yeah, that's my whisker stick. Actually, yeah, there. no, that was uh, from uh, Charlene Caton about her husband's hat. Good. Awesome. Glad yeah. to hear that. In fact, I'll tell you what. Let's do a let's do a giveaway in the chat since we got quite a few people in there. 
Heck yeah. Let me grab all these names that are in there, and there is a bunch. All right. Somebody give me a number from one to five. Let's do two. Number two it is. There's one. And there's two, and the winner is Jason Machino. Jason Machino. You're going to get a prize pack from Offshore Tackle. Sweet. Get with me uh, after the show on our Facebook webpage and uh, give me your name and address. I'll get that thing out to you. Try to do that tomorrow. And thanks for being in uh, the chat tonight. Has anyone tried to zip tie one of the lights to a demon dragon at night? Now, there's something that intrigues me a little bit. Uh, let's not Get go there. Nail horn on it. Yeah, that'd be a good Dieter question. Doctor has already been doing that. Oh, has he now? Yes. How do they work, big guy? Uh, Star caught a 14-pounder last year. Nice. Or I've done it myself. Cat. I've done it myself with a peg float, but not with a twin dragon yet. Um, and essentially, all you guys are doing for anybody who's curious, you're just taking the zip tie and you just get it started here, get it around your demon dragon or your peg float, whatever you're using on your Santee rig, cinch it down like you do on your rod tip. And as long as you got it tight, it's not going to fly off. The battery doesn't yeah. come out while you're casting. And you can trim this down a little bit if you're worried about water drag or air drag. And uh, if you guys know how crappie lights work, they attract the minnows and the bait fish and stuff at night, right? Yep. This is just a little mini version of that. So in, in my mind, you could do this even during the daytime on the bottom of the river because it's still dark down there. So bait fish will see that light. They'll swim around and hover around your, your float or your demon dragon. And the predators are going to come... And chase the bait and you're basically chumming with light you got all the bait fish around and your bait is on a hook in the middle of that school of fish and it's going to increase your chances for a bite the question is how waterproof are they these will last <clears throat> at least a good 150 to 200 hours with proper care now it's no secret that these are metal and metal rusts in water that's something that you just can't fight science um, the electricity going through the battery with the current does accelerate it a little bit. So what I've always recommended is anytime you bring up your line, if you catch a fish and you land it, anytime this comes back out of the water, because most guys, they usually a half hour to an hour before they'll uh, bring their lines in. When you bring it in, just pull the battery out, wipe it off, dry off your light before you put it back out. And it significantly increases the amount of lifespan that it'll get in the water. Um, I did a test with these, the water bottle test. I let these sit in for over a week. And even though they were rusted really, really bad, anybody who was at the first catfish conference got to see how they looked. Um, then the water started to turn brown a little bit. It stained the water. There was rust, but they still worked. And as long as you keep them clean and you're not pulling them out of the water and just throwing them in your tackle box and letting water rot inside them, they'll stay for a very, very long time. And somebody, somebody posted using lithium grease. That's a great. Yeah, you can use dielectric grease. It's a little messy, a little sloppy, but it'll protect it. I've heard some guys say they use clear nail polish. Uh, it's it's just not something that I do when I'm making these. It take me forever to coat all those pins. Mm -hmm. But as long as you're keeping them dry, they'll they'll last you for for God knows how long. It, it just depends on the user, you know. Awesome, awesome, great little product. We uh. We've been helping uh, promote these things for just about since you got started, and they've really been a they work out really well. So, well, listen, Tim, thank you for everything you do for catfishing for Catfish Weekly. We appreciate you and the kids being on the show with us tonight, and uh, you know we'll get you back on here one of these days, and we'll go at it again. Yeah, whenever you guys want me on, just let me know. Why don't you tell everybody how they can get a hold of your products? 
If you guys want to find whisker sticks, we're, we're working on a website. It's not uh, active and running yet, but for now we got the Facebook page, whisker sticks, led lights. Just look for the logo. You can Google whisker sticks on Google and it just comes right up. Um, we have the YouTube channel here that you guys see me chat on all the time. Whisker sticks fishing. Uh, I'll put a little comment in there. So it pops up whisker sticks fishing. That's me. Uh, that's my YouTube channel. We'll be doing fishing videos and stuff throughout the year on it. And uh, my email is whiskerstickscency at gmail.com. And if you guys want to call me or text me, my cell is 513 519 4325. And just hit me up whenever you need to ask a question. And he does a lot of online streaming late at night. I'm yeah, I'm a night guy. That's when you get off work or something, it'd be my guess. Yeah. I work second shift full time. I'm by trade. Awesome. Well, thanks again for, for coming on the show with us. I appreciate it very much. And uh, keep up the good work, man. I'm going to try, man. Uh, before I go, let's give away another pair of these to somebody in chat. All right. Somebody in chat. Okay. Hang on a minute. I got to clear this thing out so I can. Uh... Caught me off guard. Thank you, Matt Marshall. Appreciate it much. Thanks for all the support, guys. I wouldn't be where I am without any of you guys in chat on the show. Probably half the people on that prize wheel back there. It's all because of you that I am where I am. The prize wheel has is, is got a bunch of great sponsors. <laughs> have been on there a long time, and they've been working diligently with us, and we appreciate <clears> it so much. All right, give me a number, Tim. Three. One. Two. Three. And the winner is Kristen Sassman. S-A-S-S-M-A-N-N. -N. Kristen Sassman. And send me a message on the Facebook page. You'll get in touch with Molly. We'll get your mailing information and we'll get you a pair of lights sent out. Awesome. Thank you so much. And uh, appreciate you getting in, involved with the, uh, in our chat tonight and being a winner. Yep. Thank you so much. That's outstanding. We have right now 180 people in chat. Our, our viewers uh, on at this very second. So a lot of them are in chat, not nearly all of them probably, but uh, as fast as it's going, it would be hard to know for sure. All right, Tim, thanks again. I appreciate it. We're going to try to get a hold of Ted and see if we can get him in here to tell us about some structure fishing. Oh, I'm looking forward to that. I'll be in the live chat, guys. All right, buddy. All right. Everything. Thanks, yeah. Tim. Appreciate it. All right, Doc. Great little product. I mean, yeah, them a lot. Done a whole bunch of stuff for it, and I have sent Ted his invite. So hopefully he will see that in a minute and jump in here. Uh, he probably is watching the show, so I expect him to get in here at any time. Um, what do you say we go through some stuff while we're waiting on him to jump in the show? We can do that. Uh, upcoming tournaments. I'll just do that while I'm sitting here. Uh, Saturday, March 17th, Real Deal Catfishing Tournament. Uh, March 17th, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., Craig's Creek, Warsaw, Kentucky. That's just above the Markland Lock and Dam. Uh, any information, get with Jack Height. Uh, Central Ohio Catfish Tournament, March 24th, Alum Creek, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., Sean Dolphin is the tournament director. Get with him. Any questions? And my last one is Southwest Ohio Catfish Club. Saturday, March 31st, Rocky Fork Lake here in Ohio, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. That is Vince Nadosky's tournament series. And that's all I've got on my end, Lyle. I have Wicked Whisker Tournament Series out of Nebraska having their season kickoff April 14th at 7 a.m. at Wagon Train Lake in Hickman, Nebraska. If you need more details, you can contact them uh, at Whisker 
Wicked Whisker Tournament Series. Uh, Say that three times real quick, Law. No, that's okay. I pass on that. But thanks for the offer. <laughs> um, uh, Jeremy Gregg, you can contact Jeremy on Facebook if you have any other questions without, about that, and Jeremy will hook you up with all the information on that. Now, uh, I do have some tournament results from the Catfish Mafia Tournament Series. They tell me they had a clear, beautiful launch with 16 boat entries out of Fort Washington Marina on the lower Potomac. It was just above freezing, 41 degrees. Several fishermen chose not to come due to the wind forecast, uh, and I wholeheartedly understand that. Uh, beautiful, sunny, 60 degrees. It sounds like the weatherman might have missed that by just a little bit. Uh, two fish weigh in. First place is Robert and Mike with a total weight of 88.8 pounds. Now, this is two fish is what they do out there, and I think that's a great idea. Second place and big fish was Mark and Patrick for 48.2 pounds, total weight 85.8, really close weigh in there. And third was Chris and Dan with a total weight of 78 pounds. Uh, this is our last tournament before the Battle on the Potomac on April 7th at Leesville, Leesenvania State Park. Man, some of these names, I, I'm assuming they're... I know, they're tough. They're really tough for guys that from the Midwest that don't have to deal with that. <laughs> Maybe you ought to get me a, a dictionary. I, see, I still have trouble saying everybody's names and stuff like that. I'm not the best at it. Guys, if we do happen to butcher your name or something, uh, yeah. it's not intentional. Believe me, we're not trying to do it. Uh, but some of the stuff is is just a little difficult to pronounce. And uh, I have have trouble reading my own writing, so now I print everything out with a printer just so I can uh, can do it. Chris Baldwin, thank you so much. The yes, Chris. Thank rod you. rack is we have had a rod rack donated to us uh to give away on our show and we're going to do that next monday night uh and you need to get involved with that you need to go and like their page out of line rod racks it's on facebook and then sign up on our uh uh facebook page on catfish weekly we have a another contest already going for that and we will add you to that contest so these are really really neat uh, rod racks, uh, very well built, and uh, they make them to fit your boat. So, yep. if you have a boat uh, that is a different size than what some rod racks are, they will make it to fit your boat, and you can't beat a deal like that. They're very inexpensive, in my opinion, for what they do. And this one is going to be given away, and all you have to do is pay shipping on it. Yep. Or come to Ohio and pick it up. That's right. And if you do that, there's a chance you might be able to go fishing. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Lyle. Dustin Fall says his battery's starting to go dead on his phone. He wants us to give away uh, that uh, thing he donated. What was it? Catfish Life? River Is that what it was? River Life. River Life. Okay, River Life. So, Dustin, while you're in the chat, give me a number. And I'll roll this thing in here. In the meantime, Paul Bird, the donations are uh, from people watching the show that just send a few dollars in for help us pay the expense of running the show and what we do. And we much appreciate it. His phone gone dead. Everybody else is posting numbers except Dustin. <laughs> <laughs> these guys here we go <laughs> there he goes river river life okay give me a number dustin number three it is all right we go to random.org we go randomize one time there's two times and there's number three and the winner is Oh boy. <laughs> Randall Gingenbacher. 
Get Randall Gingenbacher. Our guest next week on Catfish Weekly. He's the guy that heads up the Fishing for Freedom Quincy Tournament. Oh, he's the first name on the top there. Well, congratulations, Randall. Randall watches nearly every week. And uh, for those of you that don't know and haven't signed up, Quincy, Illinois, Fishing for Freedom. They have 200 and some bo uh, warriors, military, present, and former that we take out every year on the first weekend in June for a fishing trip, either on the Mississippi River or Lake of the Ozarks. This year, we are about 100 boats shy of having enough to take all these military people out. These are our heroes. Wow. And we need to get a few more boats and people to sign up to take these guys out for a four-hour fishing tournament. If you happen to be in the top, whatever it is, you win trophies and stuff, but that's nothing to do. There's no money involved. It's about being with American heroes that protect us every day. And it is very much worth your time, your effort. If you live over, uh, what is it, 100 miles away, they will furnish you motels. There is several free meals involved with it, and you get to meet some of America's finest. Yep. Now, uh, Randall, get with uh, Dustin Fall here. I think he's got uh, the giveaway that you need to contact him about. Absolutely. That's a beautiful piece. I mean, I've seen the pictures of it. It's absolutely nicely done. Um, there'll be some more information about that up and coming. There's Randall in chat. Yep, I see him now. Over an hour away, he said, if you're over an hour away, they will put you up in a motel. This this is the greatest event that you could ever be a part of. It's our favorite event of the year. We love going up there. And I'm just telling you, if, if you have a heart and you love your military and your country the way most of us do, if you can possibly make it, please sign up for this. It means the world to these people and to all of us that are, that are up there. Was Randall down at the Catfish Conference? He was. Well, Randall, the doctor is coming. I signed. I signed up. Lynn and I will be there. That's so, outstanding. I mean, Doc, I know I, that. Is yeah, I've been. Awesome. I've been wanting to do this a long time. We've talked about it several years, and it's a long trip for you, and it means the world to me. Yeah. You will come over here and and spend a weekend with the with our great military people, and and they're going to love you, man. I mean, so, everybody wants to meet the doctor. Uh, oh, I don't know about that, but I'm just, uh, they do this in Ohio too, but they always have it on restricted lakes. I got a 24 foot boat and they've always got it, you know, well, they can only leave 20 footer or you can't more than 23. And I always wanted to do it. So we just decided, Hey, let's, let's go out there. Going to be a good trip for us. So I'm really, really looking forward to it. Oh, it's, it's going to be a blast. I know that, uh, 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 it looks like Jack may be coming over. I know Jack was over yeah. a few years ago. Uh, and we was in the weigh-in line. He was getting ready to leave, and he walked up and introduced me to him. It was the first time I'd ever met him in person. And uh, he had to go, and we was trying to weigh, and it was one of them deals where, hey, I'm Jack. How you doing? And and that was about it. But, uh, you know, they drove over from way over there, too. So uh, we appreciate you guys making those trips. And I know Randall and – Mindy and all the people involved with this, they care so much about each and everybody that comes up here and, and spends their time and effort. And that's why they try to do as much as they can, not only for the soldiers, but for the uh, uh, boaters too. Uh, it, it's just, it's man, it's a great event. I, I can't say enough about, and it's so professionally done. Thank you guys for all the likes tonight. We appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, appreciate it. Really well with that here lately and new subscribers. We have a lot of new members uh, to the Catfish Weekly Facebook page. That's really awesome. Um, I don't know if Tim. Uh, mm, if Jer in or? Yeah, Jerry Ishcomer. Yes, I am going to be finish, fishing the Sea Ark tournament. Wow, who was that? Fishing for Blues. I Thank you so much. Wow, thank you. <laughs> wow. That, that's a huge number. We appreciate it. The last time we had a number like that, it was uh, from St. Louis. It was a 50 spot, and uh, that, uh, that pays for a lot of shipping on these prizes. It yeah. Really <laughs> it goes a yeah. long way. 
Oh, there was another question in there, and I, it was rolling so quick I missed it. There's something for me, so I don't know what where it's at. Where's uh, Ted? Hadn't come in yet. I I haven't seen him. I, I sent him a message and told him to come in. Oh, and, uh, Paul Bird, Paul Bird. Uh, Doc, are you fishing the river or the lake? I, I'm going to fish whatever. If, if they give me a choice, I'll fish whatever my veteran wants to fish. If, he fe if they feel comfortable on the river, I'll do the river. If they want to do the lake, I'll do the lake. Hopefully, they give me that choice. They will. You okay. get to choose. You get to choose the night before the tournament where you're going to be. Okay. You have to go to that spot. Say, if if you fish, uh, tr if you fish Mark Twain, they have a way in there, and then you come back and uh, and go through the way in line in Quincy. But you actually do your way in over there. They have a convoy over there. Yeah, then they convoy you back with a load of people. Uh, okay, Ted's screen is freezing up. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, so in the meantime, let's see if there's any other questions. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, Fishing for Blues. Yeah, it, it's uh, for those of you who don't know it. When we ship stuff out, it's costing it costs us about seven dollars fifty cents to ship every package. So minimum. Yeah, minimum. Yeah. Minimum. I had one today that was eighteen. Uh, a replacement for some stuff a guy didn't get that I made up a package and sent. So uh, yeah. Uh, but that that that's part of that helps us out a lot. We appreciate it really, yeah, really yes. do. That's that's absolutely correct, and we do appreciate that. Pretty awesome. It, it is because this, the shipping does add up. Hey, Lyle. Sorry, to... Ed, How you doing? There he is. Oh yeah. Sorry about that. Well, oh, that's, that's, right. that's part of doing live stuff. It's uh, we're really excited about having you on here to learn about how you find structure and. And how about to going to see him? I'm sorry. Oh. We done lost him. He froze up. Oh boy. Eric, Eric, you back? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Did you, did you get the fly? Yes. <laughs> You're taking out of me. Hmm. He has a bad connection like Tim did. Can you hear us, Ted? Yeah, I'm just going to turn you up just a touch. Okay, go ahead. Perfect. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. All right. Let's go with it. I can't see what my picture's showing you here yet, but that's all right. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what you got going on, Ted? Well... For, for tonight, I think is what I would like to do is put the uh, fishermen back in control of their fishing experience to start with. Awesome. Um, we, we've got some really good information on structure, some new information. Uh, a, lot of the, a lot of the stuff that I would talk about tonight, uh, some people are going to go, you know, I've never heard anybody say that before. Well, and that's okay. We'll get through it. They're right. They haven't heard people say it before. So... Expect the unexpected. Uh, by the time we're done, you're, you're going to understand uh, why some structures hold fish, why some structures don't hold fish. You're going to understand why some structures hold big fish, why some don't hold big fish. It's a good deal. It's tested. It's proven. Uh, the only thing I can do is walk you through it, A to Z. All right. There we go. Can you see my little tabletop here okay? Yes, sir. Yep. Okay. Are you ready to rock on this? Yep. Oh. Go ahead. Oh, well, I didn't know that. Okay, well, I'm going to start off. I'm going to let you know that I understand these aren't catfish behind me. Yeah. But, but they are some really nice fish that my daughter's caught, and they got a lot of good memories with them. So they're just a good backdrop. It's all about catfish tonight, though. <laughs> No, I just want to let you know, there's some guys going, hold it, those aren't catfish. That's it, oh, structure, structure. That's okay. What I'm going to talk about is, and then I would like to thank you guys at, at Catfish Weekly for, for having me on board here tonight. And, you know, it, it's a privilege, and I appreciate what you do for the sport. 
Uh, now, Lyle, I'll talk to you. It, oh, you walked away. I'll just take it from here then. Are you coming yep. back? Okay. He'll be back. Yeah. Uh, well, I'll just I'll just go with it. Yeah. We got three fine. items here on the table. This is just an attention getter to start with. There's no no trick questions, no secret answers. This is a rock. I don't think anybody's going to argue with that. Okay. Now this gets a little more complicated. This fell out of a tree in my backyard. Um, I don't know the kind of tree, it doesn't matter, but this is a stick and this is a little pile of gravel. But for our purposes tonight, just picture this as being the size of a full, like a sing single car garage and sitting on the bottom of a lake. So with that said, we call this a hump. Okay. Now for the viewers, the rock, you know, if you don't have rocks, this is about you, people watching, not me. So if the body of water that you fish doesn't have rocks, replace this, substitute it. Say you're on a river, you got wing dikes. That's fine, just substitute it. If you don't have log jams, maybe you've got some old railroad trestles for standing, flooded standing timber and reservoirs. Just substitute it. If you don't have humps, maybe you've got points, underwater barriers, reefs. Just substitute it, whatever fits your body of water. Okay, what we're looking for is to establish you. And the way we're gonna do that is through information. You know, there's two areas in freshwater fishing that you really have to have an understanding to achieve a higher level of success. You have to understand the fish that you're, that you're looking for. If you're looking for flatheads, you have to know the flathead. What makes him tick? How does he interact with the water? Okay, blues, channels, same thing. You also have to know the water. And now, you know, when people say that, they go, well, I know there's log jams in that water. Or I know there's small bridge trestles in that water. It goes deeper than that. Certain things, certain elements in bodies of water trigger reactions in fish. And that's what you have to uncover. Once you have the information, we're going to go there. Your success depends on the choices you make. I don't think anybody can argue with that either. If you make good choices on the water, your success levels go up. If you make poor choices, your success levels, well, are definitely going to go down. The information we're going to give you tonight is going to allow you to make, well, some better choices. Okay, now to start with, we're going to get on the same page. Now, we're going to come back to these. I know you're probably wondering, why did you do that? Actually, it was an attention getter, but we're going to come back to these, so don't, don't worry about them. Okay, we're going to go to, to a couple definitions to start with, because I say these words a lot, uh, and we've actually changed some of the definitions. The first one is element. And basically, in our language, in the dictionary, an element is simply a characteristic or a part of something. You know, so if we're looking at our body of water, wouldn't an element in our body, like, like a dock, wouldn't that be a characteristic of a body of water? Uh, bulrushes, wouldn't that be a characteristic of a body of water? Well, of course it would. Or a part. Another characteristic that some people don't look at, and they should, and these can change from day to day, even from hour to hour at times. We'll say wind on a reservoir. Are you blowing waves into the south shore? So at that time, that's a characteristic. If it's enough of a wind, you know, enough waves coming in there, then it's something you need to consider. It's just that, just that simple. It's actually kind of common sense on steroids, but it's never, well, never been put together this way. The next is presentation. And that's real simple. That's just your offering of hook, bait, or lure. So that's an easy one. But then we get into the tough one. And this is where a lot of people make mistakes. And I'm going to start out by saying, you know, this is a talk about structure. And a lot of people go, oh, no, you know, everybody talks about structure. Well, gentlemen, in reality, no, they don't. They talk about elements. Very few people understand what a structure truly is. And we're going to get into that right now. <clears throat> There's two old definitions, or I should say definitions that have been presently used. One was set in 1956 by a saltwater angler, 
And his definition of structure is if it's connected to the bottom, it's structure. Which would mean if this rock was laying on the bottom of your lake, this is a structure. And frankly, I don't buy that. The next definition is it was set by a freshwater angler uh, several 20 years later. And his definition was that if there's a change in the bottom, it's structure. So that would take care of our little hump here. This is a change in the bottom, so he's calling this structure. Well, I don't really buy that either. By definition, in the English language, a structure is the, the combination or relationship of parts to build something. Okay, so we go back to our first definition of elements. So if these aren't structure for tonight, they don't fit the definition. These are elements. They're simply a part or a characteristic of the body of water. And I'm not going to try to get people confused here. You can obviously catch fish on elements. I mean, everybody's caught a fish off a big tree in the water. But we're lo what we're looking for is to increase your high water percentages. We're looking to find the big fish and to find fish consistently. Okay? You know, there's only one absolute in fishing. If the fish cannot find or locate your presentation, you not only will not get bit, you cannot get bit. So the theory behind this, you know, if you present to more fish, aren't, don't you have a better opportunity of catching more fish? Well, of course you do, back to common sense. So that's where the strength lies in this, and we're going to get to it. In fact, if you're getting a little, if you get a little bored with some of the technical stuff, a little later on here, I'm going to give you a piece of information about flatheads that will drive the nail in the coffin and show you exactly how important what we're talking about here is. Okay. Uh, so now we're something, talking. <laughs> there was something groundbreaking coming up on this one. So the new definition of structure, we already did the two. Connected to the bottom, a change in the bottom. You know, they worked for a while, but like everything, there's time for updates. The definition of structure should actually be the relationship or connection of elements in a given body of water that have the capability to concentrate and hold fish. I think that makes sense for a fisherman. I really do. I guess it could be argued, but I don't think we'll do it tonight. So now, by that definition, if you can still see my table here, if these are elements, and this is quite simple, a structure is simply this, okay? Now these elements are, are structured, okay? We have three or more elements in that body of water that are connected. They have a relationship. This will concentrate more fish, and I'm going to tell you why, than a single element or a double element. Each element gains power in two ways. There's two types of power on an element. A minor power, in other words, kind of useless, or a major power has the capability to concentrate and hold fish. And for everybody's purpose, the kind of fish you're looking for, flatheads, blues, channels. The trick is to find the elements in that water that are attractive to the species you're looking for. Each species relates to certain elements differently. Flatheads, flatheads are a true picture of an individual fish. I don't know how much people really realize this, but there's genetic encoding there <clears throat> that separates them from everything. Uh, they're actually the only fish in their, in their genet genophile. So there's nothing else similar. Okay, so with that said, let's break down your water. Okay, we're going to start getting into, this has kind of been the definition part. We've got the picture of what a structure is now, okay? But let's break down your water. And it doesn't matter what kind of water. I mean, it can be a lake, it can be a river, reservoir. Well, stock dam, probably not, unless it's a very articulated stock dam, <laughs> you know. Okay. Uh, there's four types of elements. And this is just technical, but there are four types of elements. And the more you understand about this, the better it's going to come out for you. And I'll explain it as we go. 
The first group is an inherent element. Every body of water has these elements. You can't have a body of water without it. It's the bottom and the shorelines of the body, it's the water in the body of water, and it's the air above the body of water. Every body of water has the inherent element. For anglers, inherent elements really don't have a lot of purpose unless we take the next step and they have a relationship with a second element. Now here's what I'm talking about. If you have a, a calm, a river, okay, you take a river, there's no current in the river, but there's water still, right? Still a river, but no current. Does that current at that point, or does that water at that point have the capability to concentrate fish anywhere and hold fish anywhere? No, it doesn't. But you add that second element, you add the current. Now all of a sudden, that water and that current combined have the capability to concentrate and hold fish, to position fish. And that's just a very simple one, but that's a really good example. Um, the next one would be cluster elements. And cluster elements do catch fish. Uh, you know, a cluster element could be a bay full of bulrushes. It, it, it's an element that covers a large amount of ground, a lot of water. It could be a mile of riprap in a river. It could be a, a double wing dike. Uh, it could be a creek channel. One thing, now by saying a creek channel, there's one thing you need to understand about structure. Structure is not limited in size. The only thing that changes with size is the power of the structure. You can have a little bitty structure as big as this on the table, but does it have any function for you as an angler? No. But you would take this up 50 times, now all of a sudden you have a nice hump, you have a structure. See? So, and here's where I'm going to just say there's guys out here listening right now that want to drift for blue cats, and they're saying, well, I can't do, I can't use this. You're talking about humps and little structures. I like to drift. Okay, what I just said, there's no limit on size. Let's take this. Now we have a rock point. Now we have a creek channel. That dead ends where some trees had been flooded. This could be a half a mile long. This could be a mile long. This is still a structure. These are still in connection. The fish that work this area will still work each area. We just don't know when. And that's the reason you use this strategy. The, the next element is a common element. And, and this would be, could be anything. Uh, anything in any body of water could be docks. Some lakes have docks, some lakes don't have docks. Uh, some lakes have bulrushes, some lakes don't have bulrushes. Some rivers have wing dikes, some rivers don't. It's an element that is common in the body of water, but the problem with it is possibly twofold. And this is why it doesn't move to the high percentage point in your list. A common element doesn't either attract the fish that you're looking for. It's not attractive to the flathead or the blue or the channel. So it really has little value to you. Like how, how, how attractive are docks as an example to, to flatheads? Not very, unless there's another element piled up underneath it. See, that's kind of what we're getting at here. The other thing that will make an element a common element rather than a high powered element is simply its size or mass, or going back to what we've already said, it's lack of connection to a second or third element. So it loses power. Elements gain and lose power in two ways. Size and mass makes them more attractive. They can, they can concentrate and hold more fish. Or, as I just said, the relationship to a second element. Then they feed off each other. You have to, if you understand that each element does something different. We have this rock. This rock can provide a couple of things. It can provide possibly some moss growth. It can provide cover for possibly crawdads, possibly leeches. This hump can, can provide levels. You, you have different, possibly different temperature levels. 
possibly a little weed patch on top, depending on the depth. Uh, possibly, who knows what around the edge. Now, if you connect this log again, now you have some freshwater shrimp hatching. So where on this structure will the fish be? Well, we don't know yet. We haven't fished it. Okay, but this definitely has the potential to hold more fish more often than these by themselves. And again, just common sense. But people don't look at it this way. They look at a tree in the water. Well, here's the biggest problem with fishing structure that people make. They get in the habit. They've caught a nice fish in the past. They've caught a 30 pound flathead on a tree. Okay? And so every time now they're conditioned, they go looking for a tree. But they pass up everything connected to it. And by doing that, in this case, we have this structure, okay? Just follow up with this. We have this structure. If I just want to fish the tree, I don't know if the fish are on these trees. Maybe there's something going on here on the rocks where the crawdads are coming out, or maybe the shad are feeding on freshwater shrimp patches. The fish are over on this side of the structure. If you pull up to the structure and you just fish your log, and you, and you pull away, you've just lost 66% of your potential bites right there. And the biggest answer I get when I tell this to people, the biggest negative answer I get is they go, well, that's a pain in the butt. You know, I don't, I don't want to have to present to all these deals. I never catch fish over here. We don't catch fish over here because you don't fish over here. But you stopped here for a reason. See, and this is what they forget. You pulled up to this structure because you thought there would be fish here. Otherwise, you wouldn't have stopped. You pulled up to this structure if you're using this idea because this has three elements that attract the fish you're looking for. Whereas this over here is all by itself, but because it's a tree, I'm going to go fish over here. You just walked away from all your potential. See, you know, and that's just common sense, but that's what you did. So now is what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you, well, I'm going to give you kind of the a, a, a situation and I, what I talked about with the flatheads. Okay, now this is some stuff that, well, probably very few people even know about. But I'm going to give you a situation to start with. And, and maybe only the flathead people, I'm assuming we have some out there, will understand this. But let's yeah, say we've got a few. Oh, I thought so. Let, let's say, let's say, yeah, there you go. Let's say it's Friday night, okay? And you're going out, you're going out to this nice little river, and you got a great big log jam there, and you're just gonna pull up the lawn chairs. You're gonna put out a couple of bullheads or crick chubs or whatever you like for bait. Up above a little upstream of this log jam, you're gonna fish. And I'm gonna bet you that you've experienced exactly what I'm gonna say now. You got there a little bit before sunset. You got it all set up. About a half an hour before sunset, you get your first bite. So we'll say 8.30. You get your first bite. Boom. Nice. It's an eight, nine pound fish, right? This is going to be a good night. It's not even dark yet. Now, I'm going to tell you right here, that fish will probably be the most aggressive fish you're going to catch all night. I'm not saying biggest or strongest, but the most aggressive fish. That fish broke cover earlier for two reasons, either genetic encoding or the fish did not feed well the night before. So that fish broke cover. So he's going to be, he or she is going to be aggressive. That's just the way it works. Okay, now you wait for half an hour and you get, so it's nine o'clock, you get another bite. You miss. Well, I've done it too, so don't worry about it. You get a mess, but good strike. Took out the took out your clicker, your bait release, okay? Zzz, just like you like to hear it. And then about oh, 9, 9.45, boom, you get the big bite. Now just follow with me here. You get the big bite. Nice. You got it. Size doesn't matter. We'll say you got an 85 pounder. We'll make you feel good. Congratulations. <laughs> and then about eleven o'clock, you get one more bite. And then at midnight, you catch a nice 10 pound fish. Now here's what happens. We'll say that last fish came between 12 and 12.30, midnight to 12.30, okay? And about one o'clock, two o'clock, 2.30, you're looking at your buddy and you're going, man, they quit biting. 
they just quit biting. So you call up a friend that's fishing down down south on the river. Yeah, hey Frank, how you doing? Well, you know, we were doing really good till about oh, about 12, 12 30, and then they, they just quit biting. Well, now see, here's where this stuff starts fitting now. If you understand the water and you and you understand the fish, the flatheads do not quit biting. They're feeding. They left. If you know the deal movement of flatheads, the 24-hour feeding process, these fish came out of their structure. Okay? They moved out. Now they're moving into a feeding zone. You caught them coming out on the, on the upstream side. You had your four bites. They've moved past you. They're up, they're up maybe a quarter mile from you, maybe 200 yards, maybe 100 yards, but they're at a feeding structure which is completely different than the staging structure you were fishing. And most people fish staging structures because that's what they understand. You know, the big log jams, the big rock piles, the bridge pillars, okay? That, and that's where the flathead stage. And that's why the first four hours or five hours after dark, everybody catches them there. But then, they, then at midnight or whatever, they quit. Now, and, and some people are going to go, yeah, but then at 3 o'clock, I got another one. How do you explain that? Well, that's pretty simple. You had another staging structure maybe 100 yards downstream, and that fish, single fish is working his way through. It's just that simple. Well, and, and we're going to, here we're in the, still on the same scenario. Now, you've had that. You've talked to your buddy. The fish have quit biting. You think. But now about, oh, I don't know, we'll say 5.30, 6 o'clock, you know, the sun's just starting to make it kind of kind of yellow, kind of orange over the, you know, over the horizon, starting to come up. You get bit again. So, so your immediate response is, well, these fish started biting again at 5 o'clock. Well, they didn't. <laughs> they didn't start biting again. They're moving back to their staging zone. You, you intercepted them. It's just that simple. Now, if you understand that, and if you understand the water and the different elements, you can intercept them all night long. You have your staging structure where they came out of. If, if you're unfortunate and you're in a boat, you move upstream to what would be the feeding zone, which is going to be shallower, going to probably be heavier current in the river, and some type of blockage they can pin either a bank maybe a rock ripple, whatever, something they can pin the bait fish up against. They're going to circle back down at sunrise. They're going to come back into their staging structure. Now, some people are going, man, this guy's crazy. But I'm going to tell you what, this is proven. This is documented in state research. They've tracked these fish over 24-hour periods. And flatheads, this is exactly what they do, okay? It is. It's just what they do. It's called high sight fidelity, which just simply means they, well, they're loyal to the site that they live in, even seasonally, even yearly. They will come back to the same log jam next year they were in this year if that log jam is still there. And so that's enough of a lecture about flatheads. Okay, that wasn't supposed to be the deal. But that's my example of why understanding all of the elements and what works and what doesn't work is important and combining it with knowledge of the fish. Now all of a sudden you just jump light years ahead of 95% of the flathead anglers that are fishing the same river. It's just that simple. And it is simple. If you do it a couple times, you just start looking at the water differently instead of just saying there's the current. And there's a, there's, there's a backwash. Fine, there's a backwash, but what makes that backwash? What elements are down there? Is there an undercut bank? Is there a boulder? Is there a tree? There's something that makes the backwash. The backwash is just there because of something else. And when you start combining and then presenting to each element, you just up your odds. You just up your odds. Now you're, now you're fishing the entire structure. And like I said, you're all, you picked the structure because you thought there was fish there. So why fish one piece of it and leave? You're already there. You're wasting more time looking for another structure that's this good. Now, I'm not saying spend all day here, but fish it. 
And then if you do locate what the fish are relating to, say they're relating to the rock, wonderful. Now you know a rock is a hot element for that day. The fish, for whatever reason, you have something hatching in that water, you have something happening in that water, these fish are relating to the rock piles or riprap or wing dikes. Fine, now you, don't, now you don't have to go through all these steps. You've located what you're wanting to find. And that's just kind of how that goes. So bottom line, how do you use this mess of information? Real simple. You start out by gathering information before you go fishing. Just extend your fishing trip. I start Wednesdays, I go looking for information because like I said way in the beginning, you have to make right decisions. And the information doesn't have to be real technical. Just, we'll say you're on a lake or a reservoir. What end of that lake are the fish hitting on? North, south, east, west? Can you find out what depth? Can you find out what baits? Can you find out if it's what elements are involved? Are they hanging on the points? Are they hanging on the, on the creek channels? Now you have that. You have that information. With that, you can put together the high percentage structures because you know what the fish are already looking for. So now I'm going to put a rock pile in my creek channel, okay, and a point together. This is what those fish are wanting right now, and that structure is going to hopefully be up on the north end because that's where I was told all the fish are coming from. Now you've got a gold mine. It's just, if you can't catch fish on that, and here's the last thing I'm going to say in closing. If you've done this, well, I'm going to back up just a step. At the end of the day, say the day went bad. Fish are closed mouth, bad bite, nothing's working. You and your buddy are sitting there. You get back in your car, you're packed up, you're getting ready to go home. What's one of the first things you guys say to each other? I used to always say it, you know, what if? What if we had, what if we did, what if we went, okay? Now to me, that's telling me that I made a mistake. I messed up. If you actually follow this, you don't ever have to say that again. And I'm gonna explain why. If you have planned your trip, if you have looked at the body of water, if you have gathered information, you know where they are, you know the end of the lake, you know the section of the river, you know the elements and structures you're hanging on. You know the baits. And you have approached that body of water, and you have fished, and you have presented to each of these elements in these structures. What else could you have done? For the knowledge you had for that day, what else could you have done? Nothing. When you're fishing, there's a lot of structures you can never fish in a day. The only thing you can do is gather information, pick the high percentage elements in a body of water that are known to be attracting the fish you're after now. Tomorrow that might change. Next week it might change, but now. And, and what I mean by change, I don't know if you're familiar with, well, I won't give the name of the reservoir, but in the spring, the blue cats are up in two foot of water all the time, okay? But in the summer, you're not gonna find them up in two foot of water, okay? So it changes, all right? So each day, each trip, you need to gather the information. And people don't do it. And then they wonder why the other guy caught the fish. Well, it's real simple. You just gather information, you put it together. Fishing is simply fishing. Fish are not smart. Mm -hmm. They aren't. People say, oh, you know, these bass or these this or this whatever, these musky are smart. They're not smart. They have genetic encoding that tells them to react certain ways to certain stimulus. That's it. When you understand that and you understand what they're looking for, like some people, okay, how many people think flatheads are hard to fish for? You know, I don't like fishing flatheads. They're hard, they're hard to catch. They're hard to fish for. They're not if you understand them. And, and anything's that way. Muskie aren't that tough either, as long as you understand them and as long as you don't over expect your results. If you stay real with what you're expecting. So, with that said, guys, that's it. I tried to pack it in as quick as I could, and kind of a lot of, a lot of uh, 
information real fast, but I hope I hope I made it somewhat understandable. Ted, what a wealth of information. Yeah. I can't that imagine was, how much you put in there. That was awesome. I have a feeling that this show simply awesome gone back and watched over and over and over because there's no way you could catch it all just going through it like that. No, that, that's the problem with trying to do it kind of quick like this. There, there is a lot of information. Now, I want you to understand how this was put together, too. This isn't just some some old guy's opinion, okay? This was 10 years. This, In fact, I'm going to date myself. This started back turn of the century, okay? 10 years ago, how this actually started, I had a relationship with a very large tackle manufacturer. And I will just leave it at that, kind of. But they appreciated the fact that I set a lot of IGFA records with some of their equipment. I, I can't see. And I didn't have a lot of money or a lot of time. So with that said, I had to figure out a way to find different species of fish on bodies of water I'd never been on. And when I started gathering the information and started putting things together, my first reaction, like in 2002, believe it or not, was like, this is pretty cool. You know, this is kind of neat. This kind of works. And we started adding to it and adding to it. And all of a sudden, it's, you know, it's not just cool. It's not just neat. This actually functions. And it doesn't, you know, the, the species you're looking for doesn't matter. The body of water you're fishing doesn't matter. Those fish will centralize on the elements that give them what they want in any body of water and any species. So that's the bottom line with it, guys. Wow. It's real doable. That's a, a lot of quality information. It really is. Well, hope so. It does work. I know. I don't know if you're familiar with Keith Sutton or not. Yes. I would oh, like. To, yeah. I would, I would like to publicly thank him because Keith's been a friend of mine. I was a speaker at the first catfish uh, college in, in the year 2000, and uh, Keith was there, and that's where I met him. And I bounced bounced information off of Keith for about two years on this. And the reason I, I was doing Keith, not, not just because he's a friend, but as you know, Keith, he's an awesome outdoor writer. He's, he's published over 4,000 outdoor articles now. Now he's into photography, which is cool. Um, and I wanted to know if, in his opinion, this was valued. In his opinion, am I beating the bush? Has this already been done? And no, this has never been done before like this. And... So I, I valued that. And then there's a, a friend of mine, well, actually part of the family, Dr. Amy Lindstrom, is a ling linguist, a specialist in language. Actually, she makes languages, which I don't understand how you can do that, but she does. And I wanted to make sure that what we were doing with definitions was, was accurate. And she was nice enough to let me bend her ear several times and uh, help me out with that. So that's just a little more info on how it came to be. Wow. Great information. I mean, everybody, everybody in chat is just going oh. crazy over this. They're just, uh, just, you know, phenomenal amount of information. Like I say, this will be a show that people go back and watch a it long again time and watch it over and over and over. And the guys that didn't see it and watch it, they'll be telling people about, and there's just so much information that uh, it's going to be amazing. So yeah. Wow. Uh, it's good stuff. It works. It does work. I'll guarantee it. I, and here's the thing. I, sometimes when I, when, I, when I want credibility for this, I'll, I'll bring this up, okay? And please just bear with it. I've set over, over 60 line class IGFA world records using this, okay? Now, some of the fish aren't that respectable, but what it does prove is that I can say, say, and I'm not just saying, okay, say I want to catch a bullhead. I'm not just saying a bullhead. I want a brown bullhead. I now know how to locate that fish through research and go get him. If I want a muskie, I know how to locate that fish and go get him, or a blue cat, or a channel cat, or a flathead, and go get him. I have pre-fished tournaments that I've never been on the body of water. I can't say I've won the tournament, but I have several big fish awards and several second, third, and fourth places. 
placed 17th in Cabela's Championship seven years ago or eight years ago. Never been on the lake. Pre-fished it in my driveway. <laughs> and, and see, and to, me, and to me, that was a huge win. Absolutely. I was in there competing. I didn't win, but I was in there competing against guys that live on that lake. And I caught fish. See, so that, that's why I'm excited about this. Heck yeah, people man. can learn how to use it and have a little patience while they're learning how to do this. It comes really, really fast. And you will never look at your body of water the same again, ever. It yeah. happens that way. I'm sure that's right. Now, uh, you are going to be speaking at the Catfish University in Des Moines, Iowa, this weekend. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. I say you're going to be speaking at the Des Moines in Des Moines, Iowa, at the Catfish University. Uh, yep, this, this Saturday. This Saturday. I, I, yep, I start at 10:30 Saturday morning. Okay, so any of you guys that that want to go see Ted in person, this would be a great opportunity to go see him. And there's other speakers up there. Brad Durick's going to be there, and several other guys. Yep, yep. Yeah, that seminar I'm doing Saturday, though, that is a flathead seminar. It will, it, will, it, will, it will contain a little bit of this, but it, it's flatheads from A to Z on flatheads. Will that be posted on the internet once you're done, or is this just you have to be there to hear it? Uh, that that seminar, I will not allow it. I'm sorry, I won't allow it to be posted because we're filming. Uh -huh. uh, and I believe that will go to Amazon. Okay. I believe okay. at this point, anyway. Awesome. Well, what a, what a great, great. Uh, video uh, tell these guys how they can get the video that you have on amazon right now okay uh several ways uh the, the video is called any fish any water for all the reasons i just gave you and, and, and i'm just going to explain here too some people ask me is it a catfish video well it is but it's also a musky and a walleye and a crappie and everything else because we're not talking about fish we're talking about you the angler and the body of water uh, but anyway, yeah, uh, on eBay, any fish, any water, the cheapest way to get it is to go to Amazon video and rent it. I believe you can rent it for 30 days for $2.99. Uh, and that's throughout the United States and throughout Europe. Now they moved it all the way over to Europe and it's, it's going over there now too. So, but that's, that's like $2.99 for 30 day rental. I would recommend that way. Yeah. Dennis Mayo would like to know where is the catfish university at? Altoona, Iowa, at the Adventureland Inn in Altoona, Iowa. And it starts at 9 o'clock with Brad Durick. He's opening it up. And then I go at 1030, and there's a guy doing some ice fishing and a guy doing kayak fishing. And we have uh, a guy that does drifting for uh, blue cats also. Hmm. Awesome. Awesome. Sounds like we do, we do have a question period in the evening where all, where all the speakers will be present and anybody can ask any of us anything they want to know. Man, that's an outstanding event. Yeah, it should be fun. It'll be a fun trip. Heck yeah. Ted, thank you so much for coming on tonight and sharing this information with us. Uh, would, would you be so kind as we have what, what else we got to give away tonight, Doc? uh i had it wrote down here oh, yeah, a, a real cleaning a real cleaning yes would you help us give away some stuff Dick? let me get i was told to do it in chat so i'm getting it right now absolutely ted would you help us give away some stuff can you hear you i don't think can you hear me oh. Can you hear me? What are we looking for? I, we're going to need a number uh, between one and five. We're going to give some stuff away. Okay. Well, you want me to pick a number? Sure. Yes, sir. How about, uh, let's go four. Number four it is. There's one, two, three, four. And the winner is Ben Wald, or Wade, Ben, W-A-I-D. Ben Wade. Get with, uh, who is that, Real? Real Cleaning. Yep. 
contact them. Get Thanks them. for that donation. Yes, thank you so much. One of our uh, rig wrap wheel sponsors. And you know, River Rat Outdoors is uh, Nick Seabold is a friend of mine. He watches the show, gets in all of our stuff, uh, plays our games and things. He has donated $10 to us, which is very much appreciated to help with the shipping cost on some of the products that we're going to be sending out. But he also wanted to pay the shipping on a prize. And what I have as a prize is a um, offshore tackle cap. Now, uh, Doc, what do you say we get Ted to pick a number out and we do that for the people in chat? All right. Give us another num number, Ted. Two. Two. Two it is. All right. One. Two. And the winner is Nathan Kaiser. Nathan Kaiser. Send us your information, Nathan. We will get that out. Nick, thank you so much. If you guys get a chance to check out uh, Nick's YouTube page, it's River Rat Outdoors. He's got several videos on there. Very, very informative, worth watching. Uh, it's, a, it's a lot of fun. Ted, I, again, I can't thank you enough. I, I know you and I talked and we tested out things this last week, but the information that you put out tonight was just unbelievable. Well, thank well, you. I, I appreciate it. it was, I appreciate the opportunity. You know, what's the chance that we get you on again one of these days for a complete hour show uh, of questions and answer stuff? I'm sorry, sir. I say, what would be the chance of at a future date to get you on for an hour of question and answer stuff? Oh, perfect. Anytime you'd like, sir. Okay, let me see. I, you know, I, I, I'm past the point of even my heart basically wanting to catch fish. I have more I have more fun taking my daughters out and watching them watch their eyes light up. And I, and I definitely enjoy it when I talk to somebody and I see him a week later and he says, Ted, guess what? You know, I did this and that fish was right where he was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. That's worth absolutely everything. Right. That's exactly right. I agree. And I will be happy to help anybody any way I can with this. Awesome. Well, let, let awesome. me get another date set up and we'll do that uh, at a future date. Probably at this point, it's probably going to be uh, late April, May, somewhere along in there. But I'll get a date and make sure that it works with you. We'll get you back on here. I know there'll be a ton of questions after people watch this show. Sure. Absolutely. Be glad to do it, sir. Thank you very much. All right, Ted. Thank, Thank you, you Ted. for this for tonight. Hey. Thank you. You have a good day. All right, buddy. Man, what a wealth of information, Doc. I'm glad I don't have to go to work tom tomorrow. My oh. head, my head's spinning already from all that. <laughs> and as soon as this show's over, I'm going right back and listen to it. Well, and that's where I'm at, you know, because I don't get to pay attention to all of it with the YouTube messages, and I still got five that I haven't even looked at yet, you know, and and stuff like that. It's hard for me to to keep straight on. But wow, I mean, it's just unbelievable the amount of information that he had rocking on there. And then yeah, one of my that was really good. Up, one of my YouTube free uh, screens froze up. I had to open up in another window. So, uh, man, that was outstanding, though. We got to get get Ted back on here, and uh, I think we could fill at least an hour of question and answer stuff. Oh, at least easy. Yeah. Oh no, I, you probably got that many. Uh, yeah. <laughs> How about a Doc's tip of the night? Doc's tip of the night. All right. Let's see how. Inflatable PFDs. Check the gauge. Should be green on your gauge. If it's red, you need to rearm it. Uh, I've got one right there. And let me see. i got to change this so I can make sure everybody can see it. Right there. There's a little green thing right there. If that turns red, you got to change the unit. Uh, mine is, and there's also that these are good for five years. Uh, mine, I have to, I have to change mine in 2020. Uh, and I'll probably jump off of the boat with this thing on there. Uh, if I don't fall in the water in the meantime, <laughs> hopefully I don't, you know, and in closing, that's Doc's tip for the night, but I'm going to tell everybody something where your PFD I, I, I watched a lot of uh, 
so a lot of people put pictures and videos and it it just seems like i'm seeing more people wearing their pfds i like seeing that you know i fell in the water last week luckily i'm here talking tonight because i had a pfd on so guys wear them anytime that big motor is on wear that pfd it can happen in a split second so that doc tip for tonight doc it's a great tip and you and i talked earlier we're going to be pushing this issue. We lost a dear friend, a good comrade in the fishing sport, and we don't want to lose anybody else. And we're probably going to be pounding this at everybody. It's a good idea. Uh, I'm as guilty as the next, but we're going to work on that. And uh, we want everybody to be around to watch these shows for years to come. What do you say we spin the wheel one more time, Doc? All right, let's do it. Let's go with number one. I know people was wanting to see it, and we'll go one. It'll go. And the winner is Sean Abney. Sean and his wife play the game every week. We are ready. Sean Abney wins Catfish Clothing Prize. One of the new rig wrap or the new rig wrap prize wheel sponsors. And, and Sean, if you will contact Matt, he will hook you up with a great product from their line of clothing. Thanks for watching tonight and thanks for playing the rig wrap prize wheel game. We appreciate it very much. Uh, let me make sure that I have got everything, Doc. Yep. Thanks, guys, for the thumbs up 152 thumbs up and three thumbs down. Awesome. Thanks. Uh, Appreciate it. That's, that's a really good thing. Now I'm going to, I'm going to elaborate on that just a, a second before we go, Doc. Uh, okay. We had a couple of guy, a guy that watched one of our old shows. It was back in the 60th episode. And I don't know what's on that episode because it's been so long ago. I can't remember, but he was cussing and raising hell with me uh, on our Facebook or YouTube page about it. I eliminated him. He come back with on under another name, and I eliminated him again. I'm not sure what he's talking about, but I am sure we was saying something about limb lines, trot lines, or whatever. In those days, it was a sore subject because so much of it was going on. And if you don't like it, I'm sorry that you don't, but we're not going to change the episodes just because you don't like it. But I will not tolerate your bad mouthing us on any of our shows or posts on Facebook or YouTube whatsoever, you will just get eliminated. And if you think you're that good a fisherman, all you have to do is contact me. I will gladly go against you in a body of water that you and I are neither one familiar with, but bring your checkbook because it won't be for free. With that, mm -hmm. thanks for watching Catfish Weekly. We will see everybody next Monday night with Randall Grichenbacher of Fishing for Freedom, Quincy, Illinois. It'll be a great show. Thanks for watching, everybody. And we're giving away the rod rack assembly yes, next week, or next Monday. So I'll get the post up. Another post, you guys get signed up. Thanks a lot. Thanks, everybody.